Well, I hope that you are well rested as we head into the stretch of our final four games. Kyle Montgomery, a.k.a. The Voice, here with you at the Krilan FIBA 3x3 World Cup 2022. This is day two. We've seen teams in action from pools B and C coming at you from the same spot as uh, the sun is still shining brightly. Heck, what time is it now? It's got to be like 8 o'clock, something like that. Yeah, 8.15. <laughs> And uh, the sun is still shining in the air. We still got some stars ready to shine for you on the 3x3 stage. None bigger than the World Cup as the ladies will take things back over. Poland, we'll get a look at the Lady Poles for the first time here in Antwerp, Belgium. They got a, they got a pretty solid squad, I must say. They are seated number three here in the competition. The Federation ranking is number two. They're coming out in the all-white. We'll also see the Polish men before it's all said and done. They will have another contest with Claudia Gurchin, Claudia Sosnowska, and Dominika Ozsharska, Zach, excuse me, and Aldona Marowik. And shout out to Dominica. She got married last week. So congratulations to her. And all the best in the future. It's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. Mongolia. That game that they had against Belgium wasn't so beautiful. They're going to try to give us a different look this time around with Arin Setseg, Bat Erdin, Bolor Erdin Obatar, Kulan Onobatar, the Olympian and fellow Olympian, Ser Serenkom Munksaikan. I get a little tongue-tied sometimes, y'all forgive me. When you look at this Polish team, they have a former world number one in Claudia Sosnowska. They have a player so good that we nicknamed her Kobe, Aldona Marovic. She is serious business, believe me. Poland's really played well in the, in the women's series, too, in the last couple years. And we're going to see if it can translate here to the world stage, the World Cup stage, that is. Mongolia, the sixth seed. But they're going to have to step it up. Yu Yin Su officiating this, along with Edmund Ho. This is game one of the final four of an 18-game slate, day two. Of course, tomorrow we'll get another look at groups A and D as we'll find out who's going to be heading straight to the quarterfinals. There's Aldona Marovic. Kobe, 30 years old, world ranked number 27. As you can see she's got a brace on her left knee as she's made her way back from injury, but still very dangerous, as is Kulan Anolbatar, the 22-year-old young Mongolian star and Olympian who uh, I'm sure she's hoping that her team can knock down a little bit more twos. I think that that's the difference when it comes to Mongolia. When they can shoot it at a high percentage from two range, I think they can compete with uh, at a really high level. And uh, they got the potential. I've seen them super hot some games, and some games I've seen them super cold. The last game that we saw them against Belgium, obviously with eight points, uh, they were colder than the polar bear's toenails. That's cold. They got to heat things up. We appreciate y'all. If you've been following us, if you've been watching the action over the last couple of days using the hashtag 3x3WC. Of course, we appreciate our official suppliers, Skelda Sports, Magic Sky, Inleo, and our ball and apparel sponsor, Wilson. None of this would be possible without them. So with that, we get to the action. Ladies, let's go. Poland starts with the rock. And we have a quick whistle. Five seconds in on the Mongolians. Trying to prevent the Poles from getting positioned. That is easier said than done. And one, Sosnowska, the former world number one. She can get it done. She'll get to the hard way, the 32-year-old, number six in the world. See if she can complete the two-point play. She's breathing easy, taking her time at the line, and tickles the twine. That's the laugh of a tickle. That wasn't that good. 
If my kids are watching, don't be embarrassed. Two nothing right out of the gates. Poland leading. Kulan will start the possession up top for Mongolia, who was represented in the Olympics. Poland was represented in the Olympics as well, but it was not the women's. In the women's competition, it was the men's competition. The ladies are trying to take that next step. No better way than become world champions. If you medal here in Antwerp, you get a direct ticket to the next Olympic, uh, not the next Olympic qualifiers, the next World Cup. If you medal there, then you get a ticket to the Olympics. How about that? Direct qualification. It starts here. This is the first step on a long journey to Paris 2024. Here come the Poles. Quick move to the right. Kicked out to Kobe. Monovic. She touches nothing. But if you remember, when Kobe Bryant, the late great Kobe Bryant, my favorite player, by the way, that I've ever seen, I think he started his career with some a big air ball in the playoffs. They weren't sure if Kobe was going to turn out. Uh, things turned out pretty good. Top five all time. This has nothing to do with, my, with this game. But I would say my top five players all time that I've ever seen would have to be Kobe, Shaq, Mike, LeBron, Steph. If you want to talk about the WNBA, uh, how about Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi, Tamika Catchings? Uh, man, my top five in the WNBA would be tough. I have to think about a couple more. Anyway, back to this game. 3x3. This is the one we really care about anyway, right? 3 nothing. Lauren Jackson, I saw her play. Anyway, nice recovery underneath. Have some of that. It's 4 nothing. Poland right out of the gates. As Kulan is a little bit shaken up, she'll check out. She's looks like she's holding her nose. And that ain't because something's stinky. She took a shot. She's got to shake it off. But a fast start for the Poles out of the gates. Big day. We introduced new teams and new groups here at the seventh edition of the FIBA 3x3 World Cup. Whoa, nice move, but you gotta finish those. Up Sharzak couldn't hit it, but guess who can? Wet business, right wing, bang, bang. Mongolia, I told you if they can start shooting from deep, it changes their entire complexion as a team. Poland answer again though, except for with a one point score. Arjen Setsek misses the tough shot there, five to two. Poland's letting it fly, there's two to your eye. That one courtesy of Claudia Gerchen. Man, the pace is nice. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about Mongolia scoring in this one, Kobe! Cash money. All right, nine to three. What the heck happened? Mongolia's looking like a different team in the first two minutes, and Poland looked like a team that's gonna have to be dealt with. They score in bunches. They got nine points in two minutes. They are here cooking. Ain't nobody wearing no apron either. Sofnowska, make that 10 points. Halfway to the 21 point mark, and we just scratched the surface of this game. Skips it inside, Sofnowska drops it off. Another bucket, counted, Gurchin. The high arc on the two, that one is a no-go. As Mongolia sets up defensively now, 
They have not been able to do much to stop this Polish attack. Smarovic, she's tricky with it. Pull up, take that with you. Blau, 12-3. If you were sleeping on Poland, you better wake up quickly, push, foul, and a TP timeout with a 12-3 game. Good to see the Mongolians with a little bit more offensive punch in this one. But Poland's throwing offensive haymakers, not just regular punches. So you got a little bit of a listen to that Mongolian huddle. There they are. Keep by a couple of Olympians and Kulana Nobatar and Serenkam Muksaikan. Make sure you check out FIBA.basketball slash World Cup. Stay up to date on everything that's happening out here. The biggest event in FIBA 3x3. Oh, she follows like a stalker, but she does not complete the score. Monovic will give it up. This one-two combination between she and Sosnowska is kind of like Kobe and Shaq. Maybe we should start calling Sosnowska Shaq. Shaqnowska. I got to get approval for the media team on that. We'll see. Four fouls apiece. Six and a half to play. Nine-point advantage for Poland. As Arian Setseg steps up to the charity stripe. No defenders in her face on the free throw line. She calmly steps up and gives us a splash. Marowick with a Marowick with a miss. She's still getting it done even you know, after that pretty devastating knee injury. And when she's fully healthy, she's a full-on problem. Eight-point game. Gertzen starts the possession. They're going to get it up top. Gertzen will get it back. Swings it down low. Good defense there. That's gonna, only going to leave Poland with .4. So they got half of a second. That's quicker than a New York minute to get the shot up. Why not give it to Kobe? Monovic. Didn't get that up in time. Only player I've ever seen in history hit a shot with .4 seconds left is Derek Fisher against the San Antonio Spurs in the playoffs. That was like maybe 2003, something like that. Somebody do the research for me. I was in college. <laughs> that was crazy. It was right after Tim Duncan that hit this ridiculous shot and it left the Lakers with .4 and Derek Fisher catches and shoots. Incredible. Two thousand and four, courtesy of my director, Bogdan Alexa. Appreciate the assist, my friend. Game five of the Western Conference semis. See how smart I sound with the help of my team? I love it. <laughs> well the next thing you can do is give me a uh, the final two WNBA top five. All right. I already said Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi, and Tamika Kachis. From what I've seen, I, I forgot about Candace Parker. I'm in LA. Come on. Candace Parker. And how about Elena Deladon? That's it. I don't need any help. That's it. Those are my five. Not that anybody cares, but I figured I'd share. It's 12 to 4. It's not exactly tight right now. Offensive foul. Seven on Poland. Well, so while they hold an eight point advantage, they don't have an advantage of the foul category. They gotta settle down. Jab step, moving left. Cookies took. Gurchin, she likes sweets. Great defense. She's gonna check out and get a breather while Al Sharzak will check in. 
long two. Floating right out of bounds. Poland will take back over with Avsharska, Zach, Maravik, and Savznowska. Savznowska setting the screen. Kobe moving left. Stop, pop, shut him down, open up shot. Oh, 13 4. No. Oh, Y'all know that one, huh? <laughs> Just over five minutes left. The first look at Poland here in Antwerp is impressive to this point. Monovic, she is a she is a bucket. So Monovic, she be stroking. Poland is giving it to Mongolia with a 10-point advantage halfway through this 10-minute sprint. Avsarzak, she will kick it. Savznowska, normally good close, but she's also good in the deep end. Bring your scuba gear. It's 16 to four. It's a storm of two-point shots and mid-range strikes from Poland. Claudia Gurchin, she starts this possession for the Poles. She moves right, comes back left. Maravik was on the move. She's held up by a sixth Mongolian foul. They got no more to give. Nearly in as much trouble as the Poles. When it comes to fouls, Poland not exactly too stressed. They're working on a 12-point lead and working on even more. Make that 13. Quick math. This game could be over quickly. All Poland needs is four. And all Mongolian, Mongolia has is four. And they're still traveling. Ran into some tough defense and a couple of extra steps. Gives Edmund Hull the call on the baseline. Madovic with a miss that time. She misses? Who knew? Wow, 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 wow. Oh, nice pass. Attempt. It's broken up. Av Sarzak has done it defensively over and over again. Can they somehow make this game interesting? Another defensive stop for Poland. So you can still see the score here on the broadcast, but apparently we have a scoreboard issue. A little bit of a glitch. It happens from time to time. They're going to get that fixed here momentarily. But as long as uh, you got me in your ear and you have the visual support on the broadcast, then you know what the score is. 17-4, 4.08 left, seven fouls on Poland, six on Mongolia. This is women's pool C game three. There you have it. So this, so they're actually asking the players to step off the court for a moment until they can fix that scoreboard. It's a much needed break for Mongolia who have a seat. They're gonna have a powwow. And they're gonna try to draw the plan that can help them complete a 13 point comeback. So while they do that, why don't we take a look back at some of the highlights in this game. We've got a lot to choose from, from Poland. Not so many from 
Mongolia. All right, this is how things have gone so far. We've seen Kobe in her groove. Splash with the short range jumper. Sosnowska has been filling it like a masseuse as well. She's got the touch. It's been uh, more than just a one-two punch. Oh, there we go. We have a great technical team. That scoreboard is fixed. All right, and that means we can get back to it. The drive and the kick, whoa, too high. Sosnowska checks out. Smaller lineup for Poland. They're looking to do big things here in Antwerp. As they'll set up defensively. Mongolia's got to let the two start flying. Not just flying, but they got to start landing. And we got a TV timeout. We're under four minutes to play. It has been all Poland. And it's been different strokes for different folks. Let's listen. Pretty much finish what we started. They are in a good position. I'm Charzak standing up top while we watch the first of two free throw attempts from Kulan. She is certainly cooled off. Kulan has got to hit it. Oh, Sosnowska. She cannot complete. The reservation for two. Gertrin tracks it down. She's going to let somebody else go to work. But uh, Alsharzak couldn't get that one to go. Now Gertrin says, fine, I'll take it myself. She misses two. No problem. I got your back, sis. Dominica, got it done. Congratulations again. Got married just last week. And I'm sure that hubby is watching right now. Congratulations, my man. Y'all winning. Your wife is really winning. 18-5 in a big way. Sosnowska will step back. Goes to the crossover. Hello. Seventh foul on Mongolia. Two freebies for Sosnowska. Again, former number one. You could kind of see why. She's 32 years old. Stands 184. She's got great touch. And she can do it inside and outside. Well-rounded player on this Polish team. You could make your centerpiece. We still got it bumping out here. 
Savnowska. She'll get it back. Two piece. No biscuit. But a win. 22 to 7. Well before the limit. Poland puts it on Mongolia. Their first body of work will be their last body of work. They will not be playing the Dominican Republic on today's schedule because they didn't make it. So the next time we see them will be the day after tomorrow, which is Saturday. Right? I think today is Thursday. I hope today is Thursday. I sound really dumb. What a... Uh, Man, they breezed to that win, and they hurried up and exited the court, too. Quick business is what they made of Mongolia, who fall to 0-2. They managed eight points against Belgium and only seven here against Poland. And we'll show you the highlights, some of what you saw a little bit earlier. This was just a, an, a rainstorm. They said, save your check, save your money for a rainy day. This would be that day. Poland was making it rain from start to finish. No ponchos available for the Mongolians. They got drenched. Savsnowska, have some. Kobe, take that. Avsharzak getting in on the action as well. And the finishing touches. Gurchin. Misses, but she wasn't missing that much. She contributed as well. But that would be the icing on the cake. A sweet win for Poland as we have three more to go. Beautiful area, beautiful venue, outstanding city. It's Wednesday. Today's Wednesday? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I'm one of those people, I know that what the date is. I know the date, but I don't know what day it is. That's how you know somebody is busy. Like, what is today? You know the days of the week? All right, I was wrong. I guess I do look pretty goofy. Life is all about forgiveness. Chinese Taipei. <laughs> Taking the court as the men reclaim the stage here in Antwerp. Chinese Taipei did show some flashes earlier. I, I really saw some of the talent that they possess. When they start getting it going, especially Chiang Chung, that dude can shoot it, really. Wang, Han, and Liu make their quartet. They come out in the all-white uniforms. They were, Looking clean. Can they clean the floor with their opponents, which are the Germans? How about Kelvin Bryant? That dude was everywhere in uh, game one. I thought he looked really good. I thought the team, the team in general looked really good. I don't want to take away from the it is a team game with Bastian Langraf and Alan Boger and Nicholas Geske. But Kevin Bryant really stood out to me uh, in their opening contest against Chile in that win. Just his constant activity really, I think, gave them a great chance to, to get a win. And that's exactly what they did. The question is, can they go 2-0? Can they join the ranks of the elites, the Latvias of the world, the Serbias of the world in the men's competition? All the other unbeatens. And it's also not how you start. I remind you, it's how you finish, too. I've seen teams start 2-0 and, oh and go cold in their second round of pool play. All of a sudden, they don't get a favorable seed and the tournament ends before they expect it to. It is a possibility. But it was a 20 to 16 win for Chile over Germany. For Chinese Taipei, they lost 15 to 22. 
to Mongolia. So let's get this one going, shall we? Couple more games left on the schedule today. We'll be back tomorrow as well. As you know, it's a six-day competition. A lot of 3x3 hoop. You're going to get a heavy helping here at the World Cup. Boger kicks it over. Easy drive and a little extra English on that layup from the German. Chiang, Chiang, Chiching. Money on the drive. Beautiful spin move as Geske swings it over to Boger. Boger, he's got the right flavor on the scoop. But, man. It's an answer right back. That time it's Ching Sun Liu. Kicked out. Sets his feet, sets his sights. Now the net's dripping. So we've seen a little, we've seen the balance on this German team. That was Landgraf on that last two piece, no biscuit. 4 2. Germany, thank you. That foul on the floor. Wipe the bucket away. No continuation. Liu will start it from the logo. Liu with Bryant in front of him. That's textbook defense. Whoa, he had him in handcuffs. At least get that man a phone call. 4-3. Chinese Taipei. Just keeping step with the Germans. Geske, he's going to move right. Lofts it down low. Oh, and the score goes. Nice little two-man connection that they got going there. Langraf has put the ball in the bucket a couple times. Chiang trying to do something strange. Turnaround. Just long on it. Langraf will give it over to get it back. Bryant will sprint to the left wing. Geske had it poked away. They got 4.6 to get it up. So they're going to check the clock. And I said 4.6, but that may be getting adjusted. Maybe. I'm not privy to the discussion going on at the score table right now. So sometimes I'm guessing, sometimes. OK, so there we go. It is 4.6. That is the termination. They get the shot up in time. It's a miss. Boger couldn't hit it. He also cannot defend on that possession as Chun gets in there for the score. Chiang Chun, that is. Young Chinese Taipei team, I, I should mention that. The eldest member of the team is Chi Yuhan at 22 years old. His beard hasn't even fully grown in yet. At 22, neither have mine. Point is, they are youthful. They got a lot of promising years in front of them. This German team, fairly young themselves. Nobody over 28. Geske is the oldest at 28. Langraf and, and Bryant is 27, and Boger 25. Geske gives it over to Bryant, and Bryant lays it in. Just over two minutes in to this one. Germany with a two-point advantage, but I don't think this is going to be a, a walk-away win for the Germans. I've seen China East Taipei really play with a lot of heart. I've seen them play with like three players several times and actually get pretty far. 
That was the women's competition. Here with the men, things are turning up. Landgraf is, he's hyped up. Bryant, he's gonna get a rest as he watches Lou attack the rim. Missed it, off the 10. Guestgate, directed traffic. He swings to the left wing, jab step, shot in the air. Missed it long to the right. Couldn't track it down in time, so Chinese Taipei will take over. Lou, dangerous pass. Nearly stolen. Instead, it's poked away. Gotta leave eight ticks on the shot clock. Oh, defense. KB, bullet pass, cross court, down low. Did he get it up in time? No, he didn't. I knew it. Three in the key. You got to be careful as a big. Get out of that paint and then come back in if you got to, but don't just stand there. What a move. But the, he got a little hung up on the layup. Now Han, he's on the move. And Bryant does a semi-somersault. Look at the defense. Shoulder fake, Lou. Not that time. Ball back over to Red. They got Boger who, oh, he thought he had established position cleanly. He gets whistled for the offensive foul. He's going to get a rest. Both teams, in fact, get a rest. 6.51 left. We got our first TV timeout. Let's eavesdrop on the Germans. Yeah, I agree with them. Whatever the method is, it's worked so far because it's enabled them to earn a three-point lead. Han will stop. He cannot pop. Long rebound to Bryant. Gesquet has it for a moment. Landgraf. He decides to drop it off. Gesquet gets to the rim. He's hacked. Gesquet shoots one here. For the seventh seeded Germans. Nicholas Gesquet. Again, 28 years old. Oh, he's going to get whistled for the foul this time. Actually, that was Landgraf. Take a look. As Lou was putting the heat on him on the baseline, now Lou will find himself shooting. Lou. Ooh. It's a miss. Guess game. Takes his time. Lost it into Bryant. And a very smart play. He had nowhere to go with the ball. He could have tried to force a pass to the top of the key instead. He throws it off the defense. That'll save him 2.2 ticks. Still going to be a tough shot to get up. Guess game. He's out of there. Got the shot blocked. The Wilson left. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a bucket. Goal 10. Otherwise, Bryant was going to have an easy layup. Take another look. Oh, yeah. Lou doing his dance. He needs somebody to come free. Chiang. He's got Kobe defending. Oh, Boger. He reaches the, ooh, ooh, wait a minute. I didn't know Boger would even attempt something like that. I guess it worked out because he ends up getting two instead of one. He might have rather had that body. Maybe I'll ask him. Oh, back to back, it's a two P. Deuces are wild for Boger. He's going bonkers. 
5.30 to play. And all of a sudden, Germany has opened up a 13-4 lead. They saw their women split their pool play action yesterday with a 1-1 one one record. Shout out to them, Luana Rutherfeld. Saw a look at her. It's Bruce Chorus. Who else is over here? There's Lou, soft touch. Oh, that was a good recovery defense from Chinese Taipei. I'll take that, and we'll take that back. There's a lot of stealing happening out here. Bulger with the heat check. Foul red. That called, uh, she was reaching for the rebound. Over the back, Landgraf. Grabbing too much. Timeout white. I'm not mad at the timeout, but you'll know that if about a minute away from getting a break anyway for a TV timeout, which is going to occur just under four minutes. But they want it now, so that's fine. It's 14 to 5. They got to sort some things out. Foul shooting. Xiang Chun. 20-year-old. He's going to get a crack at it for the charity strike. Germany closing in on what would be their second win. Again, a four-point victory over Chile. And Chinese Taipei are not doing anything to help themselves. Bryant, he wants to swing it across court. He does. Now he's going to slip to the bucket and give Geske some space. He's going to drop it off to Bulger. He has been gunning. This dude is shooting to kill. 16 to 5. The Germans showing off some of that weaponry. Liu gets a little bit of space on the pull up. But Bryant comes away with the rebound. About to say Bulger. That's another heat check. Nice feed. Easy lay on the other side of that. But a 10-point game is Bulger. He's uh, on a scoring spree. I know he didn't make the layup, but you can count all the, the doubles that he's hit in this game. And now he's going to go to the free throw line and add to his total so far. Number 17 gives Germany their 17th point. Bryant gets in there and disrupts the pass. Han will open the possession for Chinese Taipei. It's looking gloomy for Chinese Taipei. This is the time for shots like that. Just put him up. Guess gay. Bryant recovers it. Has the sense of awareness to get that shot up before going out of bounds. This is a, it's a solid German team. Eighteen to six. They are flowing. Uh, Another one side of the fair. Special. As we listen in. All right, let's get back to it. That's, that's a loose ball right there. Whoa, did he come down with that? Oh, I thought that might have been a travel, but maybe got, got away with that. Gasquet, Boger. Only person to stop him is himself. Gasquet, Gas. 
A flame from the right wing. It's game point for the Germans. This one on the verge of being a done deal. All they need is one. And Geske, he can't cash in there. Bryant, though, he'll swing it. He'll give Geske another look. High arc. He says, Auf Wiedersehen. That's it. Goodbye. 22 to 7. Germany looking strong. If you have not circled them as a team to watch, do it now. They handle their business like a full body massage. Chinese Taipei on the wrong end of this German buzzsaw as they speed to victory like this was the Autobahn. And now they get to rest up. We ain't resting up yet because we still got some unfinished business here today. Two more games remaining on day two's schedule. We certainly hope that y'all will stick and stay. As we will get a look at Mongolia and Lithuania in the men's competition. And in the women's competition, Belgium versus Egypt. I know the fans here in Antwerp are going to definitely stick around for that Belgium ladies game. But yeah, do, do the voice a favor. Just stick around with us. I like to have some company. I don't want to feel like I'm talking to myself. And the more of y'all leave, I start to feel like I'm alone. Germany was by themselves far in the lead in this game. And you can see why. They were hitting the target consistently. DJ Lass. Looks like DJ Lass is just kind of overseeing the action. It's boss mode. Come on. Now, before we get to our next game, we're going to give you some entertainment. And we're going to let you look at the top 10 dimes of 2021, the top 10 crossovers, and the top 10 dunks of 2021. That's a treat to you before we get to our next game. So enjoy that right now. Straight oh, that wasn't a dish, that was a delicacy. I see you, Aiden Kavga. The side, he gives it up to get it back. He's on the move. Oh my goodness. Oh, he got option, he could pass that. It's like Stockton. He hit that one from the parking lot. Off the glass, saved behind the back like an informant. 19 to 8. He's been above par for this USA team. Oh my goodness! That was filthy! Ball away, hook is a no go. Pai Shilich on go mode. He flips it over his shoulder. Sharon is caring. And they connecting like a Zoom meeting. 14 to 1. Oh, you fancy, huh? No look feed from Soka sets up Mello. 16 9. 
Fabricio with the rebound. Get the contact, she ain't scared. Oh, the magician. Voila, Alakazam. The only thing she hasn't done is disappear. I think she can do that too. Find a better dime than that. Plum left lonesome. She reroutes, changed direction, goes behind the back like a surprise, and sets Katie Lou up for two. jacket right now off the bounce he tucked it under his bum and then he brought the base like an 808 so tyler curry up first uh up and over finishes with the windmill he's breezy and he makes it look easy so he's gonna do it by himself he flies private, <laughs> and he's finishing with filth. <laughs> fix the nets, please. Don't worry about the nets, just fix the rim. Amen! <laughs> the East Bay over Tyler Curry. Hey, this dude is out of this world. Oh! MG, that gave me motion sickness. I am Miller time. Off the bounce, he goes 360 windmill. Oh, it finishes with the one-handed pose. He touched his knees like he was twerking.
midair. And this finish with the one-handed slow down. Bravo. Over two dudes. That dunk was nastier than Quagmire. We back. Hey, can y'all believe that, in, that Vincent Arroyo was trying to get me to go out there and compete in that dunk, that dance off? Listen, I can't dance. I think he was just volunteering me for embarrassment. But I can tell you somebody that can dance. Julian DeBove can dance. I see, I, I let the secret out of the bag. And I'm not joking. The dude can dance. That's who you should ask, not me. My talent is in my vocal cords, as long as they last. <laughs> Welcome back. Unfinished business still. As the Mongolian men will try to right the ship. Well, not necessarily right the ship because they're coming off a, a victory in their first contest. Can they go 2-0? That's the question really at hand right here, right now. They beat Chinese Taipei. And now Anol Batar, Aryan Bo, Davas Sambu, and Iqbat are trying to put their skills together and uh, get another victory against an opponent that surely will be probably a tougher test. That, uh, that is the Lithuanians who come in absolutely loaded like a baked potato. The guys in green into the court now. They're clearly excited and ready for the opportunity in front of them. As both of these teams are eyeing a 2-0 start to their campaign here in Antwerp. And the last member now joins them. That is Marius Uzupis, a.k.a. Uzi, with Darius Tarvidis, Gentautis Matulis, and Ignis Vaikus. Man, look at those faces. Those dudes don't play. They quit school because they had recess. I, I can't confirm that, but I just thought it'd be clever to say. Let's speak. Oh. Okay. okay. Uh -oh. Coin flip has already taken place as our officials step in their place. Photo time. Say cheese. Hey, Ben Ho and Yasmin Euros, two of the best in the biz. Saw them in Tokyo last summer. Congratulations to all of our officials who put in a lot of work in officiating a game that is different. I mean, it's fast, it's sometimes hard to call, but they do a great job. Anand Aryan Bolt, he does a great job on this Mongolian team, the 25-year-old. He's um, emerging before our eyes. We saw him game one. He had the stroke going. He's in great physical condition. Ignis Vadkus, we've seen him at his very best just two years ago, the most spectacular player on the world tour. And when they use the word spectacular to describe your game, you got to be good. May the best man win, may the best, best men win here in Antwerp, Belgium, 2022 the Flanders region. I've had an opportunity to go around the city uh, a, a bit and I'm just, I'm just impressed. Super clean, a lot of uh, diversity and huge 3x3 fan base. As you can see, we got a packed house, y'all. Nobody can pack that. Vaidkus straight to the rack. Inkbot, that is a grown man bucket. Sign that ball for me. Dope gun, stronger than a crowbar. So he'll step up to the stripe and try to complete the two-point play to the hard way. Does it go down? Yeah, it does. Mongolia taking early edge here in the first 15 seconds of this 10-minute sprint. Uzi will get it down low. Matulis, faker. Nice move. 
and a quick foul on Green. All right, here we go back again. This is Pool B men's action. Top seed from each group goes directly to the quarterfinals. The second and third seeds will go to the last 16 and play in a play-in game to get to that quarterfinal stage. And uh, uh, obviously the fans here are waiting for the Belgium women's team to take the court next and cap today. But they have been engaged watching countries that have nothing to do with them, really. That's because they love the game of 3x3. It's quick, it's epic, it's Olympic. Have you heard that before? Take that back. Baikus will now give it to Tarvidis. What? That was nice ball movement. They are in sequence on this Lithuanian team. And Baikus, I know he's the most spectacular player mostly because of his offense, but oh, he gave us the Carl Malone. He's relaxing with his head behind his head. Somebody get him a nice drink with a straw and an umbrella in it. If it's that easy. Four two. Delgarnyam Davasambu hands it off to Anan Ariambo. Flick of the wrist, rolls off the rim. Uzi tracks down the rebound. Baikus will receive the ball, but there's a foul down low, and I think that's called on Ujupis. Vaidkus will check out. I don't think he'll be out for long. Matulis defending up top, Aryan Bold. He's moving left with Uzi in defense. We got another whistle, another push. That's an offensive foul. I mentioned some of the points of emphasis this year in terms of the officiating, one of them being the three-second violation with your back to the bucket as soon as the ball touches the ground. But also, it's supposed to be a pick and roll, not a push and roll. So if you extend those arms, you are going to get a whistle. Ujupis cannot give them a bucket. So he will get a rest. Darius Tarvadis is in. Bob will start the possession. Aryan Bow. He pulls the trigger. And that ball lands right in the hands of, of Nina. You know, she's been able to, she's been known to be able to hoop herself. But she was not looking for the shot. And another foul on uh, Mongolia. So we're two minutes in and we've seen the whistle blown now. Nine times, eight times, four fouls apiece. Neither team willing to give up an inch. I like your cut, G. Backdoor feed from Ujupis to Tarvidis. Tarvidis reaches over, deflects it for the moment. The bull charging to the rim. He's sent away, but nice floater that uh, goes down as Mongolia will keep pace. 5-3. The Bull with the move. Who made up that choreography? I like it. 5-4. Davasambu called for the foul. So this is looking like it's gonna be a hack fest. Like this action, three-man weave. Matulis, crazy shot. And you guessed it, another whistle. The official's cheeks are gonna be burning. Their lungs getting some extra work in this one. They have been blowing that whistle, justifiably so. 
Dogon sneaks to the rim, but I think that hesitation at the last moment cost him the bucket. That's okay. They are going to make up for it without a problem. Anol Batar is able to put it up in the end. Baikus. Air. We are tick under seven minutes to go in this contest. Five, five across the board. Five points, five fouls apiece. Let's listen in to the Mongolian Warriors. What's the strategy? The bull hands it off to Aryan Bowl. Just a little bit off on his math on that release. To the ball back over to Green. Lithuania. Oh, wow. Tarvita steps back. That was way off in the deep end. Aryan Bowl is going to respond with a one point score. Foul on the inside, and that's on the floor. So he won't get the free throw attempt. And Mongolia have no more fouls to give without going into the penalty. Vaitkus will open up, top of the key. Here we go. Ujupis from the free throw line. Elbow. Tarvidis, he just knocked one down. Is this a heat check? It is. Hey, you better check up. Nike couldn't check him. Forget the swoosh, that's a swish. As Anol Batar, he answers right back. But you can't fight twos with ones. Oh, Tarvid is, is going ham right now. He's going off like a fire alarm. Somebody turn that thing off. 10-7. Tarvid is, now will swing it. He's going to let somebody else have some fun. Why not? Vaitkus, he takes two. And we got action. 12-7. It is absolutely raining. If you're on this Lithuanian team, 12-7. The Bull, he will put up a tough one. That finds the bottom of the net. So Mongolia keeping pace. Oh, Dogun, he is sneaky. Steals that one away as Anol Batar puts that one up. Vaikus will snatch the board. Tarvidis, he's made his last two twos. Why not give him another opportunity? Oh, or just do that. Sharon is Karen. Sets up Uzi for the easy lay. It's back to a five-point game. Davasambu, strong, but too strong on the jump hook. Now Uzi trying to empty the clip. Uzi, he's out of there. Finishes with the filet. And Vaitkus with, look like maybe a fatigue foul. There was no need to do a foul there, but he's tired. He's going to take a moment for himself and just catch his breath. 3x3 will do this to you. Time out on the floor. As we listen in to the Lithuanians. Hey, mass control. Arjen Bold, he's thinking too. I knew he would be. He, there's contact on that two ball. Tarvidis knows it too. When you contest that two, you want to go straight up. The moment you start leaning into the shooter or leaning towards the shooter, you're going to put yourself in jeopardy of being called for a foul. And it's certainly contact that puts the 25-year-old on the line. Anon Arjen Bold. Splash that. Just saw him a few weeks back at the Manila Masters. 
He uh, put on a pretty good show out there. He splits the pair of free throws. Lithuania is still enjoying a five-point lead for now. Vaidkus. Front rimmed it. Strong offensive rebound from Matulis. Oh. He took him to spin class. Drew the foul. And Matulis will now shoot. Again, Lithuania is your two seed here. Silver medalist at the Europe Cup 2021. They're trending upward in the right direction. Matulis now extends that lead to six. Both teams in a penalty. No. So he splits two. Aryan Bow. He's trying to get some free space. Can you give him a taste? Not that time. Inkbot, good offensive rebound. He's going to try it at a closer range. He misses the Nobatar, the same result. He'll try again. If you fail, then try, try again. Oh, Vaikus got his cookies took. Quick hands from the Mongolians in a 10 5 contest. Make that 11 to 15. Not 10 5. You know what I meant, though. It's a four point difference. Vaikus, whoa, yeah, missed it right at the rim. Maybe some of that fatigue starting to show on the Lithuanian squad. Travel called, shuffled his feet before going into that offensive attack. And we have a TV timeout with 3.48 left in a game that's not decided yet. Mongolia only trailing by four. Open your ears. Let's listen. So as we get back to it, Matulis, he quickly gets it to Ujupis. Look at the action. Oh, they practice that play. It's Harvardus. The betrayal. That ball did not participate. It just looked like it was going in. Oh, good rock from left to right. Matulis is everywhere. This dude is straight D and up. But they give it right back. Ikba will drop it off. Can Aryan Bowl connect? He has not found his service yet. Tarvid is now clear lane for takeoff. Put your tray tables up. Davasambu, nope. Matulis, nah. Ikbat to Davasambu, the bull. He misses and then scores. Missed chance for the Lithuanians. And Ref Ed ain't playing around. He gives Lithuania a warning for bickering with the officials. Tarvid has wanted a foul call. He didn't get it. If they decide to argue again, they're likely going to get a T. Wow, dang. There's the Mongolian. Contingent. Several Mongolian flags flying in the audience here. They brought their own cheering section. Aryan Bolt trying to sell that foul. He does not, they don't buy it. But Mongolia does get hit with a foul. And each team will see free throws with any defensive foul. Even uh, Yasmina telling the Mongolian players to stop talking. 
No complaining. Lithuania pulls within four points of the desired destination, which is that 21 point mark. That's the finish line in this 10 minute sprint. They now have three to go. 18, 12. Somebody has got to lose. Matulis. Uh uh. Aryan Bowl. Deep two. Front rim to Tarvidis. Quickly to the corner. That ball is stuck. Wedgie. That takes a different type of skill to complete a wedgie. Yeah, use Ujupis. That's the smart thing. Does he get that point? You got to reward a guy for giving that extra effort. He's playing in a 10 minute sprint. He's jumping up there getting wedgies for you. And then, and then we're going to show the replay. <laughs> Man, we can be cruel sometimes. And that's not a highlight. Oh, put him in the bucket. Why not? The bull is bullying. Okay, Dabasambu can. Cut this to a two possession game with a buck 55 left. Ew. It goes. And if this one goes, the crowd is really going to let the Mongolians hear it. And Davasambu does it. We got a 15 18 game, folks. They leave Darius Tarvidis. Tarvidis. He's driving, and he's finishing 19-15. The bull too strong that time. Ujupis. Oh, look at the rotation. That's it. It is over with like that. The Uzi unloads and hits his mark. So it is the Lithuanians who remain unbeaten. They go 2-0. And Mongolia fall at their hands. Take another look. Uzi pulling the trigger with the left. He is a lefty. And they're going to leave this arena with another W. 21-15. One more again over Mongolia. And then there was one. One game remaining, that is. Let's get it over to uh, Darius Tarvidis, and here was he, he has to say about that win. Rachel, take it away. So Mongolia is not exactly the power, basketball powerhouse. But Sorry, I didn't hear you. Mongolia is not exactly the basketball powerhouse, but they still gave you a hard time. Tell us a little bit more about your play. Yeah, Mongolia is a really good team, very tough team. They have very strong guys, good shooters. Uh, we just try to give them back fight. Uh, we execute our game plan good, so... I'm happy with the win. And we noticed that the women's were watching you. They, they won two games yesterday. You, you went to see the women's yesterday. They came to see you. What's the kind of dynamic? What does it create having uh, them, you and them together? I mean, I'm very happy for our girls. They win yesterday very tough uh, two games against great opponents. So shout out for them. For them. And for us, uh, you know, it was games just to win. We maybe don't have great uh, basketball, great dynamic because we just uh, playing first uh, games together. But uh, I think uh, we play with a character, with our skills, and we, thanks God, we win. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So the Lithuanian men and the Lithuanian women are unbeaten as a nation, 4-0. Here's how they got there, the men, that is. Found themselves locked into a tough battle with the Mongolians who came in after a win as well. We saw uh, some great defense, but I really was impressed with the shooting. And I gotta say the passing as well. Lithuania was a crisp unit. 
The Mongolians are known to be able to ha to be able to fight. They got a lot of fight. So you knew they weren't gonna they weren't gonna go anywhere. They were gonna make this a competitive game, which they did. And Steve Sir over there trying to give his team some energy. But yeah, it's only so much you can do when they're shooting it like that, right? And most of the damage by the Lithuanians done from deep. We saw Darius Tarvin is really start filling his stroke from beyond the arc. Bayed Kuz hit, uh, hit a couple. They were doing damage on the interior. Twos versus ones. You pick. What would you rather have? Not that they can't score ones, too, because Darius Tarvidis with the one-handed boom. The bull fighting to the last shot, but this would be the last shot. Goodbye and good night. As Lithuania put the Mongolians to bed. As you can see, sun still up as it starts to make its descent. It's loud in here. It's still lit. They might break the decibel meters as the Belgium women We'll close the show, day two. They go against Egypt. We'll get our first peek at uh, this Egyptian team. While Belgium got off to a slow start, they were able to right the ship and get it going offensively. 12-8 win over Mongolia. Out they come, ready to go. They got great size on the inside with Ein Joris. They got dynamic offensive ability and size as well with Becky Massey. Julie Van Lu, the Olympian. She's a wizard with a rock in her hand. And Lori Resimont. There's Massey. She's the last to enter the court. This is the Belgian quartet. They're smiling. But you better believe they got kill on their mind. All right, out come the Egyptians. Still trying to put their name amongst the true competitors in this 3x3 game. They come in as the 12th seed. Egypt won the Africa Cup in 2019. They rocked the red jerseys. They have a tall task against the homestanding Belgians with the crowd behind them. That almost serves as a, as a fifth player, but here they are. Hello, Hala El Sarwawi, Moral Abdel Gawad, Radwa Salim Ahmed Sharif, and Azwar Maged. That is their four. They will get warmed up, they've been waiting all day. Literally. They've been waiting all day for this final game. Game 18 of 18, 38 in total of over 100 scheduled at this seventh edition of the World Cup. And our final two officials from day two, Glenn's happy. He's ready to go uh, kick his feet up at the hotel. <laughs> Yu Yin <laughs> ready to go as well. We don't throw up the peace sign, we throw up the three sign. Three X three. Get it right. There's Julie Van Lu. I was telling you about her, 29 years old. Uh, she's got bad intentions if you wear a different color jersey for, than her. She will flat out make you look silly with a barrage of crossovers and no look dimes. The problem the first game is they couldn't, they weren't finishing well. 
And that's not a criticism, that's just the truth. They would tell you that themselves. Azrar Maged, she wants her game to speak for her. 23 years old. Egypt trying to shock the home standing. Lady Cats. They're in lion territory. These are the lionesses. They are on the hunt. Ashraf will start with it at the top of the key. The final 10 minute sprint of day two. Let's get to it. Crossover. Nice moves. I like the aggression. First possession. Everybody's fresh. We'll see how the game goes, though. Nice move. Ashraf off balance. Rolls off the rim. Massey will pass screen away and then slip to the bucket. She wants the ball. Give it to her. She gives it to Egypt and then she gets a warning. She started to defend in that semicircle, restricted area, which you cannot do. That's a warning. Next one's a technical. Van Lu trying to stay in front of Ashra. She has her pocket picked. Ball top of the key, Resi Mont. Not happening, but she does poke that one away. 10 seconds on the shot clock for Egypt. Shot tap, speed rose. I'll move to next. I'm just playing. Whoa. She might have been seeing double on that shot. That was. Nowhere close on the fadeaway. Okay, looks like we were all set to go. No discrepancies on that last play. Well, maybe it was. Oh, uh, yes, that's what Glenn was checking. So it's, the ball's gonna stay with Egypt. They got six seconds on the shot clock. As we, I thought it was gonna be Belgian ball, but that's a double dribble. Tough defense forces that sometimes. Egypt makes a substitution. In comes number 11, Radwa Ahmed Sharif. Sharif. Van Lu's pass, snuffed out, stolen. Here come Egypt. Foul off the ball, White. Oh, Ashraf, oh my goodness. That was long. Nice feed, Resimont. That's good eating. So Belgium will have a chance to answer that deep two with two the hard way. How about Ashraf giving us a taste of what she can do from deep? No rim needed for her. As Resimont connects as well. 3-2. Ashraf. Back to the bucket, a couple of fakes, puts it up. Does not put it in, but sticks with it. Lofts one up, misses. Doesn't get that one, that still comes back to her, saves it, but nobody there to save her for her effort. Van Lu instead will start it, Van Lu will get it back. Van Lu for two. Comes right back to her. Look, Ma, one hand. Oh, that was tough. Just lost the handle on that ball there. Take another look at the drive. Abdel Gawad had a step. Just lost the handle.
kick it over. And they run out of time. Shot clock violation. Asrar Maged was just a step too slow. Two minutes in, and Belgium leading by two. Resimont lost her footing for a moment. She's going to get it down low anyway. And Joris is hacked. That was in the process of the shot, so she will shoot one. Ein Joris, swish. I know that Belgium is seeded 20th. They don't look like a 20 seed. Three point lead. Massey with the fake. She's denied at the door. Mostafa playing bouncer. Van Lu for two. She broke him off like a Kit Kat. 7-2. Now Van Lu, uh-oh, snatched her. Missed it. That snatch back is serious. <laughs> That's when you, you drive hard and you pull the momentum all the way back with the crossover. You get more space than an astronaut with that move. Van Lu all alone. She does not get reservations for two. Wide open look, long range. That stroke broke. Van Lu fires it down low. Becky Massey, couple of moves. She has been taking her protein shakes strong. Oh, Resimont trying to defend. Does enough to prevent that bucket. Massey swings it over. Van Lu saying, get out of here. Directing traffic. The entry pass to Massey. Massey to Resimont. Count it. Belgium have built a seven point lead. Oh, what a look. That was a, actually a no look. Few, few glimpses of some of the talent that this Egypt team has. They got, a, they got a play a fearless brand of 3x3 in enemy territory. Obviously with the crowd on Belgium side, we are in Antwerp. You can tell by the scenery around us here at Grunplatz. If you're from the States, uh, we would call it Greenplatz. And that would make it even more confusing for you because there's not much greenery around here. Van Lu tried to thread the needle, but she misses her mark on the pass. 6-12 to go. So clap, so clap, so clap. Gotta get a shot up. Just inside the two-point arc, that's off of red. Uh, 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 uh. Crowd is in it. The song is playing. Everybody dance now. They've been dancing. Resamont. Two piece, no biscuit. Nine point lead. Oh, Ashraf. Dropped the shoulder, missed the shot. She's trying to swing it out. Mostafa. Not that time. Only two points to Egypt's name so far. Resimont, down low to Massey. Massey fades away, thinking she would have went up strong. She would have had a bucket there. Instead, she's going to have to defend on the perimeter. Maybe not, because they feed it down low. And a quick whistle on White. I believe that's called on Resimont.
Van Lu in defense as Egypt will look for their third score. Do they get it? No. Points are hard to come by with this Belgian defense. Van Lu just telling everybody where to go. Shoots it too strong. Good defense. Reaches in. Mustafa, uh-uh. Ayn swings it. Dangerous pass. Massey can't gather herself in time to shoot a good shot. What a move. Ashraf. She's responsible for the only points that Egypt has, which is a long two. And another foul committed. Substitution is made. As El Sarawari is out. There's another double. Ashraf, couple of moves. No score. Van Lu just hit the two. Crossover. That brought out some ooze, but turned it over. Ashraf. She's going strong to the hole, but she is yet to find her target close range. Van Lu passes up the two. She wanted to kick it to somebody else. Instead, she pulls the trigger. Misfires. Good defense inside. Massey now out of, uh, I thought she was out of position. She's blocking like Legos. She was. Radwa beats the buzzer for Egypt's third point. Resimat. Spin move. <laughs> Ow! 11 is the lead for Belgium. So the TV timeout comes. Belgium has been coming on strong. Turn down for what? Belgium, they got it turned up in a major way. 14 to three, blowout at the moment. Still 3-13 to play. Van Lu in her bag like lipstick in a personal mirror. Step through. No bucket. Oh, even Joris missed it. She's going to get another opportunity and makes it count the second time around. All the Belgian fans are grinning from ear to ear. They like what they're seeing. And they don't like that. That's a splash in the eyes. Wake up. 6-5, Van Lu. She chunked the deuces, but she missed it. On come the Egyptians. Let's see if they can start a little run here. If they can start getting them to go from two range, they'll be in it. Or maybe. That certainly ain't going to help. And neither is that. 2-0-2 left. Belgium with an 11-point advantage in the last game of day two. I don't mean that we'll be completely through with two days of pool play, which means we've seen every team in the competition. Every team we've seen at least a couple of times. As so we'll get it back to A and D tomorrow, and we'll start to decide what uh, the elimination rounds will look like. Uh, here's what Van Lu's crossover looks like. She'll slice you up, and she'll fade you like a pair of old jeans. 
That's why she's an Olympian. Rashima to Messi. Oh. Arwa, no. Massey, Resimont. She puts on the brakes. Nice hustle play, right? I think she was able to throw that off of Egypt. She does. That hustle is going to earn her a rest with a minute 39 to go. Yeah. That's a good play. Van Lu on the move. Puts it behind the back, but. Massey can't finish it. Quickly swung. Ashraf. Nice up fake. Tough layup. Goes. But then a foul on Ashraf. Three fouls per team. Van Lu and company going back to work. Van Lu to Resimont. Count it as well. So this Belgium team is taking everything they want. It's like a riot. Van Loop. She's just going to feed everybody else now. She's done her damage. The damage has not been done fully yet. 18-6. Difficult layup attempt. Van Lu misses on the drive. That one tipped out of bounds. As the Belgian fans are on their feet. This is Lion Country. Cats trying to scratch another team off their list. Resimont foul. <laughs> Resimont misses that one. Oh, Ashraf lost it. Got it back, though. She will give it up. Up fake. Nice move. Oh, Rescue Minus. Pump up. She lets out a roar. Great timing on that block shot. Van Lu. Couple of misses. Reverse layup attempt. No. Only 10 seconds to play in this one. Van Lu with the vanilla scoop. That's it. 19 6. Belgium. Does it again. 2 0 day to start their campaign here in 2022. The Cats make easy work of Egypt. And the fans are letting them hear it. So, looks like Julie Van Lu is. Heading over and getting ready to be interviewed. Rachel Rominger standing by with Van Lu. Oh, we won't give it to her just yet. The wind is, is hating on Van Lu. All right. Somebody get some uh, reinforcements over there for that. As uh, Rachel, I'm going to get it over to you. Just make sure y'all protect Van Lu. Wow. <laughs> Two wins in one day. An amazing crowd behind you guys. How are you feeling? Yes, sir. What's up? Hey man, the first game we were so stressed, my really so stressed. 
But now, the stress is away from our shoulders and we really enjoyed you all. Thank you for coming, man, I appreciate it. So you're saying you were stressed before. What's your degree of confidence right now? What did you say? Sorry, my bad. You said you were stressed earlier. Yes. So like, what's the degree of confidence you have now? Oh, uh, now I, I just want to play another game. Let's go. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, no, like, the crowd has a huge impact. And, uh, like, yeah, I can't explain now how much I enjoyed this game. And it's really amazing. Really, it's an it's amazing event. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Wonderful. And... Any adjustments your team needs to do ahead of uh, going up against uh, Team Poland on Friday? Yeah, Poland is a really tough team. Uh, I saw the game against Mongolia and they play really well. They play smart basketball, they have a lot of experience. So we need to be ready. We have a day to prepare this game and I'm sure that we're going to be ready. With this crowd, we're going to be ready. Good luck. Julie Van Lu. She said, we gonna be ready. And they were a bit stressed against Mongolia, 12 to eight win, but uh, this was stress relief. They've been relieved of all of that. They are playing loose 3x3. And these are the final looks of the final game of this day. Egypt and Belgium, you knew that Egypt was gonna have a difficult time with these Belgians playing in their own backyard, defending home court wanted to erase what they thought was a pedestrian performance against Mongolia. They, uh, they definitely cleaned some things up. And they cleaned the floor with the Egyptians. The crowd helped them do it. The cats were roaring on the court. The crowd was roaring in the stands. And Van Lu was doing her thing. She leads the way in a Belgium blowout. Not just her. This is a team sport. How, how good was Resimont in this one? Resimont knocking down the two from long range. He was also stroking on the inside. But Van Lu was getting more twos than Twix. Crossover, baseline, fader. What you gonna do with that? You can see why she's an Olympian. She's dropping dimes behind the back. Although that one didn't amount to a score, it was still nice to see. <laughs> Resimont asserting herself on the interior, and she will not be afraid to hit that block button. No new friends. No, no, no. Those are all the friends she needs. Her three teammates who stand victorious with her. And look at that skyline. That is a beauty shot personified here in Antwerp, Belgium. As all the fans start to leave the venue, they're going to take a breath and get ready for what tomorrow might bring. Here's what today brought for us in the women's competition. You see uh, the teams that really stood out today. France looked good. United States uh, go unbeaten. We just saw Belgium uh, look outstanding. Poland is looking great as well. We'll see them meet up against Belgium on Friday. Uh, those are the standout teams in the women's competition. As France picked up... Uh, couple of wins so I guess it's chalk it's staying true to, to what the rankings say meantime on the men's side the Netherlands the Orange Lions with a strong start Poland split their action Latvia probably stole the day with Batman's return uh, they were unbelievable and one last look at the groups it's France and USA the forefront perennial powers in the women's competition. They got the most golds, most medals, I should say. Belgium, I know it says 3-0, but I, uh, they're actually 2-0. They didn't play three today. <laughs> Poland, 2-0. Those two titans are gonna clash on Friday. And in the men's competition, we also saw B and C in action today, Lithuania. Cannot forget about them. Germany, I told you, that's another team that you must keep an eye on. Mongolia is still in the mix. We'll see them again on Friday as well. And uh, Pool C, I mentioned the Latvian team. They scored 44 points and they only allowed, I think, 11 today? Ridiculous. It's them and the Netherlands that are the class of their group. 
So we won't see these teams again until Friday, but as for tomorrow, which will be Thursday, I checked. Here's something that you want to keep an eye on. Serbia, France, circle it. Germany and Japan on the women's side, circle it. Belgium, USA, do I have to even tell you about that for the men? Come on now. Tomorrow, big, big day. We got another 20 pool play games. We will decide the first four from each uh, competition that will be going to the quarterfinals. Lot to look forward to. That starts tomorrow, 11 a.m. local time as the Creeland FIBA 3x3 World Cup continues tomorrow. I'm the voice of 3x3, Kyle Montgomery. Peace out. We see you here tomorrow at 11. One.